What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to master your beats to just get them to be more clear, to add clarity to them, to get them to hit louder, harder, and sound even better than just with your overall mixes. So if you guys are ready for this, let's jump right into it. Okay guys, I'm going to show you a little before and after before we actually set this all up. So let's do a before first. So as you can see, it still bops, it still hits, but once you see after the master, it's going to be like a breath of fresh air. So let's look at that right now. So you should hear that not only does it hit a lot better, you're able to hear everything better, you're able to hear everything more clear, and it just sounds more cohesive and more professional all together. Did I just say cohesive? All right, guys. So the first thing is obviously you're going to make sure you're going to want to make sure that your mix is already good, right? We didn't start with a crappy mix. If you start with a crappy mix, the master is only going to make it a little bit better, but it's still it's still a crappy mix, right? So that's the first thing. And let's go ahead and go through each of these plugins that I use. We're actually going to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and get rid of everything. Now, I usually start with my beats with the saturator on it, and I usually start with it at a negative four. But for when I start to do my mastering, I like to turn it down a negative eight just to give us more headroom to play with in case we're going to be stacking things on. Okay, so this is how it's going to sound just like that. Yeah, so that first plugin that I use is a transient shaper. I use the Kilo Hearts transient shaper. Um, you can use Ableton's drum bus. You could use a different transient shaper. I know Waves has one called Smack Attack. There's all kinds of them. So just use a shaper that you like. And we're just going to ever so slightly just turn it up a little bit just so that we get the transients on everything in the overall master to hit a little bit nicer. So literally all I'm going to do is play with this attack knob right here and just try to boost it to an area where it's not too much, not too little. One other thing that I like to do is put this before the saturator right here. So that way what the saturator is going to do is it's going to clip off anything that might be boosting because when you start to boost the transient shaper, you're going to get a lot of gain out of it as you boost it more and more. So I'm going to put this before my saturator, which has the soft clipper on. All right, now let's start playing with this. Cool. We just want the punches and everything of each of the drums to be a little bit cleaner, a little bit sharper. We don't want to completely go crazy on our master. We're just doing light little touches that make a big difference overall. Okay, so the next step is using a EQ. You can use any EQ of your choice, anything that you like. And the thing about this step is that I sometimes do this step, sometimes I don't do this step. Because the purpose of me using this EQ is to boost the kick boost the 808 frequencies or boost the snare frequencies and things like that. That's what I like to use this for. So depending on the beat, if it needs to be boosted, I'll go ahead and make a little edits. If it doesn't, sometimes I won't use it at all. So let's listen to it really quick. Okay, so that kick and 808, they're sitting right where I want them to, but let's use this to kind of boost the clap just a little bit. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a plugin by Slate Digital and it's called Fresh Air. This one's completely free, so there's no reason that you can't grab this one right now. Slate Air is really nice. It lets you add some highs and some mid highs back to your beat. Now, when you have that 808 slapping and slamming, it can take a lot of the highs away from the hi hats and different drum sounds like that. So, bringing them back in the master is like super golden. It's like a little sauce that you should know. So I recently I've been using this link right here, which puts them both up the same amount at the same time. 
You could do them individually if you'd like, but I like to use them at the same time. You can hear it just brings life back into your hi-hats your snare clap things like that that might not be standing out as much because the 808's thumping it all out the next thing that i use is a plugin called golf fox which is pretty much did i say fox i meant golf foss so it's pretty much like a ai plugin that listens to your track and it either boosts or reduces frequencies in certain places to kind of clean it up and help open it up a little bit more so what I usually do for this plugin is I just set both of these to 20 so that it's not doing too much, not doing too little, um, and that seems to be a good balance. And when you're using this plugin, you at least want your recover and tame to be around the same area when you're doing it. So that's why I usually set them both to 20 there. And I have a full tutorial on this plugin. I'll link it at the top of the video right now if you guys want to learn more about Golfos. All right, so it's going to look like this. This is before it. after it. So it really can make a huge difference in your beat. And as you can see, it's doing things at real time. It's changing things up, making like that. So it just knows what to do perfectly for you. All right, guys. So we are on to our last step and that's using Ozone to just put its finishing little mastering touches on it for us. So I've played with this quite a bit and I found that the mastering assistant usually gets it a little better than I can, at least off first rip. And then you can always go back and change things if you need to from there. But what I'm gonna do is make sure this section's highlighted right here. We're going to go to the mastering assistant. I'm going to leave everything how it is. Okay. And then I'm going to press next and it's going to wait for you to go ahead and listen to your tracks. So and I'm going to play it and it's going to go through and analyze everything for us. All right. And then when it goes ahead and finishes up for you, it should be sounding a lot better than it did before. Sometimes what I'll notice is that it goes ahead and it does the limiter a little bit too much, so it might be squashing your beat too much, or it might be squashing it too little. So that's the main thing that I would suggest tweaking or at least listening to overall. It usually does a pretty good job with everything else. You'll see that added a dynamic EQ, which is doing like pretty much like golf us, but they uh, figured out a couple spots where it might be able to be tweaked for us. It added some dynamics, which actually doesn't seem to be turned on, so it decided that we didn't need them. And it also did another EQ right here. So if you're happy with how everything sounds, you're good to go, you're done. But like I said, let's listen to this limiter really quick or this maximizer and make sure that it's doing enough and not too little. And usually you can just mess with the threshold when you want to do that. So usually if it's too much, you just back the threshold off a little bit more. Or if it's too little, you can pound it a little bit higher. You can see that's too much because it makes that kick sound papery and just too much once again. All right, guys, so that is how you master your beats the best way possible that I have found. And I hope you guys like this one. It's a little different than what I used to do in the future. So if you saw my previous mastering uh, tutorial, then this one's gonna be a little bit different, not too much off. The biggest difference is, is that I'm using, um, you know, ozone a little bit more than I was before, and I'm doing a little bit less than I was doing before. So as you can see, it cleared up the beat, gave it a lot more clarity, made it hit a little bit better, and just overall made the mix a little bit louder as well. And that's exactly what you want to do with the master. You definitely don't want it to sound any worse. So anyways, guys, if you like this tutorial, please smash that like button for me so we can get this video moving to other producers such as yourself. Hey. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're new here because we're uploading videos like this all the time that you're not going to want to miss out on. And besides that, guys, I'll be catching you all again in the next one. Peace out, gang. Hey.